Coach, go ahead. Yeah, so great day, phenomenal. Weather broke a little bit for us today, a little bit cooler. Got some great situational work in. Worked on two point plays there at the end right there. And thought that was great to see from both sides. Thought our guys did a good job on a thud day of staying up and staying healthy and practicing the right way to continue to push that. Got some great kickoff cover work and kickoff return work, situational with different types of sky kicks and squib kicks. Uh, I think our special team's got a chance to be really good this year. A uh, little bit of news, we got some news on Habas. Uh, he's not gonna be back for this year. So he's got a medical condition that's a non-football related injury. I'm gonna leave it at that until he chooses to go further if he does, because that's personal to him. Uh, our medical staff and everybody is still working to figure that out where he might could redshirt and return for next season. But first and foremost, our, you know, our, uh, our concerns are for him and, and getting him well. You know, that's what I just told the team. You know, that's a, that's a, you know, anytime that somebody does something right all the time and it doesn't work out for them, there's a lesson to be learned in that. We talk all the time about what are you going to, not what are you going through. And I know one thing, Avery, I know several things Avery Havas is going to. He's going to being a great husband. He's going to being a great father. And he's going to being a great leader in the community. And uh, what he goes through on his avenues to those things is in the Lord's hands. And he knows that. But, uh, what a great young man, and uh, we certainly have great hopes that he's going to be well eventually be able to play his senior year. So with that, I'll open it up. I mean, he was out here today. It didn't look like, you know, still part of the team, still encouraging guys. And oh, yeah. Avery Habas, you know, whether he plays another down or not, is one of the great Golden Eagles, you know, uh, with the way he's lived his life, the way he loves this place, and the way he's played the game, you know. And like I said, it's not over that he may ever play again, but they've got to figure that out. And, uh, and uh, but we love him, and he's he's – Definitely a part of this program. Coach, to that and to that position with Avery not yeah. going to be here. You got to talk about how Tremont Henry's come along and, and the depth he gives the number three there in that spot. Yeah, it's been great. You know, I mean, like I said, when we lost him, we kind of had a luxury there from the standpoint we had more than enough. You still got Jaleel Clemens, who's got a chance to be an all-conference player. You got Josh Carr, who was a dynamic player two years ago, and you got a young freshman in Tremont Henry, who is going to be a great Golden Eagle one day. So we got a. You know, we play one jack most of the time, so that's a two deep plus one. Then we got a really good, you know, walk on that plays his heart out in Caleb Sausage Gardner. So, uh, you know, uh, we, we, we've got good depth right there. And uh, so that, that's a credit to our staff and Joe Marino and Reese Trainer and how we've recruited and, and how we've developed. I'll speak to the biggest thing I've noticed with your offense this year, just watching the scrimmages that I've watched, is y'all's ability, be it the quarterback or whatever, to, uh, to extend plays, get to, get to a progression, and then and then extend a drive working underneath to be a, a check down or, you know, or whatever, yeah. just a yeah. huge difference to me. Yeah, both of them get the ball out on time, and then when it's not there, they are making plays out of the pocket, you know. Uh, uh, you know, I think it's a little bit of a misnomer that Billy was just a pocket guy, uh, you know, and you've seen Glenn, man, he's taking off and run on zone read and quarterback run schemes, and, and uh, you know, it was kind of known that Holman could do that too, and he's shown that since he's been here. So we feel like both of them are going to be able to make off script plays, if you will, and they've done that all fall camp. And uh, that's been that's been really, really good to see. So if you say that's something you've already had. <laughs> well, you know, our struggles have been documented offensively for a lot of reasons. Uh, we're excited about the development of our O-line, uh, the development of our tight ends and backs and receivers, and certainly these quarterbacks bring a lot to the table that we're going to be able to build it around. And uh, we think we think got a chance to be pretty dang good. Your defensive line, uh, you got some depth there. You got some guys you know, yeah. thinking about Jalen Williams and uh, yeah. Ratcliffe. Yeah. You got some just tough guys, gritty guys that kind of love going out there and you know, kind of give, give their 110%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so guys. our fans ought to really know them because they're all back from last year. The only one we lost was Cooley to an injury, but everyone that played for us is back. And then we added Eric Thomas. Ely Fubai red-shirted, and now he's coming off a red-shirt year and in the mix as well. D'Amico Rowland red-shirted, and is going as a big driving force right there at nose guard. So we just, then we added Cam Mackey as a true freshman. So we've just got more depth than we've ever had there, and we've got a lot of proven pieces coming back. You mentioned Jalen Williams. We think he's got a chance to be an all-conference player. Josh Ratcliffe has had as good a fall camp as anybody on our football team. Uh, Quentin Bivens is back, you know, and uh, – Feel like I'm leaving some. Oh, Bro Darius Lewis has really come on. You know, Bro Darius Lewis came to us at about 265, and he's up around 300 now uh, out of Jones Junior College. And Steve Buckley and our Prattville High School and is uh, going to be a really big force in there too.
No, just with, um, you know, with Caston and uh, Jones out with the concussion yeah. protocols, the receivers just back behind them still looked as dynamic yeah. as they did. Yeah, you know, I think kind of a theme of what, you know, we've been talking about is we got a lot of depth. You know, uh, Caston should be back uh, by Friday, we think. Uh, Frog should be back probably next week. You know, we don't we don't mess with head injuries here. If, if we do not, mental health's important here. The their concussion protocol and all, we are to the T with Todd McCall. And they both bang their heads hard on the turf, uh, going for diving passes. And so we don't play with that. And, uh, you know, we, but they should be on their way back here soon. But like you said, man, it's giving these young guys opportunities. Javion Butler, you've seen Flash. Um, Say Franks has really come on. Uh, Ty Mims, of course, has been Ty Mims, and Taquan Henderson's made plays every day. So uh, we feel like, you know, we do have good depth right there and got a chance to have, uh, you know, some, some – oh, and B. Hayes. Man, B. Hayes has had as good a camp as anybody on our team, too. So we got good depth. you got, you got to speak about uh, Jalen Jalen a little bit. Just yeah. like you make a step coming on, yeah. coming on flashes every day. Yeah, we think Jalen's one of the more talented linebackers that we've had here. Uh, now he's learning the system. We do a lot defensively. He's got two great mentors, really three great mentors in that room with Hayes Maple, Swayze Bozeman, and TQ Newsom. But he's a dynamic playmaker. He's going to be integral in our kicking game and also with what we're doing on defense. We may do some sub packages where we get him on the field with some of those other linebackers. But uh, if he keeps living life like he's living and, and studying and being with Ancar, he's got a chance to be uh, one of those linebackers, one of those prototypical Southern Miss nasty bunch linebackers. One more for Coach. Uh, some of the players have been talking about the ping pong competition. Going on. They said you're one of the better <laughs> ping pong players, a part of this program. Can you can you talk to us about your skills at, on, the, on the ping pong table? And yeah. <laughs> well, first, Carter Hankins is the best. Okay. Coach Chad Williams, Southern Miss Hall of Famer, is right there with him. He's gonna be mad at me for me saying Carter's the best. Coach Williams right there with him. And then after that, I, I can I can hang with anybody. Uh, I can get I can get Carter every now and then. But uh, the thing about me is, you know, and I try to, I, we kind of use ping pong as an example to all of them that core value four is always compete. And always compete's not about the result, it's about the journey. And uh, when I first started playing, I was terrible. But I played Carter consistently, and I played Jack Walker and some of our better players. Davis Dalton's really good, and I got better and better, and now I'm really good. Now I got my butt kicked a whole lot, but <laughs> through competition, you improve, right? And so it's kind of been a good little funny example of why we preach what we preach to our kids. Appreciate it, guys.